What are the best settings for this monitor? By best settings, I mean the settings I adopted in my review as my test settings. So these settings got me to my usual colorimeter targets and also suited my own preferences and the unit I'm testing. Be aware that individual units and preferences vary, so these won't be optimal in all cases. The first thing to consider is the brightness of the monitor. This control is set universally, and that means that it applies to all presets when you change the brightness here. I opted for 56% because that got close to my usual target, which I use for consistency in my reviews, for around 160 nits. That suits my own preferences and lighting environment as well. You always have to adjust the brightness according to your own preferences and lighting environment. Anything I'm not mentioning here, by the way, I left at default, and that includes the contrast at 75%. Also be aware that I'm running the monitor in SDR at the moment. I will cover HDR separately. Next up, you've got color settings where you can change the preset mode, for example. I'd recommend custom color or standard. Custom color if you want to adjust the red, green, and blue color channels. Some people may prefer sRGB if you want to use sRGB emulation, which gives a more faithful reproduction of sRGB content. You can adjust the brightness and contrast when you're using the sRGB setting, but you can't adjust the color channels. Remember, you need to be using custom color for that. The warm preset may appeal as well if you want a low blue light style setting. This does indeed significantly reduce the blue light output, especially if you're reducing the brightness of the monitor as much as you can cope with. And it gives a warm, slightly greenish yellow tint. It's not a strong green tint as far as such settings go. So you might find it more comfortable for viewing in the evening, for example. But back to my preferred custom color, that will give you this little menu so you can adjust gain, offset, hue and saturation. You can of course adjust all of this to your own preferences, but for me, I just adjusted the gain controls. I set red to 98%, green I left at 100% and blue at 97%. That got close to 6,500k with a good neutral green channel on my unit. Individual units will vary. Next we've got the display section of the menu. All I did here is I changed response time to fast. As I explore in the review, you may want to use normal, depending on your sensitivity to overshoot, and certainly at lower refresh rates, this becomes more of a setting you might want to use. But I generally use the monitor at sustained high refresh rates. So for me, the fast setting is my preferred option. And they were really the only adjustments I made for SDR. Brightness set to 56%, using the custom color preset, and the gain control set with red at 98%, green 100%, blue 97%. And response time set to fast. Something to be aware of, there isn't a VRR control on the monitor itself. Basically it's always on unless you've disabled it in the graphics driver. So if you're looking for an adaptive sync setting or VRR setting, just remember there isn't one. And if you want to know that VRR is working correctly, I know it can be useful to have some kind of frame rate display or refresh rate display on the screen. There isn't an FPS counter on this model, but if you go to more information, display info, the refresh rate it lists there, that will actually change as the frame rate of the content changes if VRR is working. Focusing in now on HDR, so I'm going to enable HDR in Windows, and then I'm going to look at some HDR10 content, which is the signal type that this monitor supports, as is common for HDR monitors. So I'm on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, HDR10 content, the monitor's receiving an HDR10 signal. There's not really a lot to go through under HDR. You'll see that brightness and contrast is greyed out, for example, so you can't adjust that. And if you try and change the preset, it just says currently processing HDR content, so you can't adjust that. If you go to display, there's a smart HDR setting. Now, when you're running SDR, this doesn't do anything, so it doesn't matter what you set this to. You're just setting it up so that when an HDR signal is being received, and it'll say HDR plus at the top there, the top right, when that's happening, then this is a setting which will be used. If you want to force disable HDR compatibility entirely on the monitor, perhaps you want a game which is being a bit annoying and forcing HDR on when you don't want it to, you can have smart HDR set to off. Otherwise, I'd simply recommend sticking to desktop. The HDR capabilities of this screen is very limited, but out of these options, it's the most appropriate. Movie HDR gives quite a funky, over-brightened and over-sharpened look to things. Game HDR tones down the over-brightening somewhat, but instead over-saturates things, and again has a very strong sharpness filter. This monitor is a sharp monitor anyway, so I much prefer the neutral sharpness of desktop. But as usual with these settings, feel free to use a different one if you don't like desktop, if you prefer how the other settings look, then of course feel free to use them. Just quickly returning to SDR now, so I'd like to talk a little bit about visibility enhancement in games and some of the options that are available to you there. So the most straightforward, I suppose, way of doing this would be to use Dark Stabilizer. So it's set to zero at the moment, and that's the default setting, it means it's disabled. If you increase that, you can see a significant uplift, primarily to the dark shades, but also to some medium shades. 
it doesn't change the black depth. It won't be clear from the video, but just saying that it doesn't change the contrast specifically, but it is giving a significant uplift as you increase the setting. So even set to one, it gives a nice uplift, two, a really strong uplift, and three, a very strong uplift. So this is just something you would want to do if you want a competitive edge in games, you're finding enemies a bit hard to spot, that kind of thing. I know this isn't a gaming monitor, but I'd say as far as such settings go on monitors, this one's pretty well tuned, really. Alternatively, if you're using the sRGB preset, you'll also get a significant uplift, and that's because it targets sRGB gamma, rather than linear 2.2 gamma. I explore this in more detail in the review. The FPS mode will also give a significant uplift. It makes a few other changes, gives kind of a filtered look, weird saturation. But if you're finding it looks good to you, and you're finding it's giving you a good competitive edge, of course, feel free to use that as an alternative.